Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased point of view, right? Um, in particular, an extremely biased point of view today because I would like to tell you about my favorite numbers or my favorite sequence of numbers, the so-called Catalan numbers. And why do I like them so much? Well, basically, as the subtitle already says it, it's in praise of counting. So um, the Catalan numbers are, well, a sequence of numbers, we will see them, and they count so many things. It's really, really impressive what kind of different things uh, are counted by Catalan numbers. I would go as far as saying, whenever you have a counting problem, you should first check with, uh, well, the Catalan numbers, whether, whether you're actually counting the same thing as the Catalan numbers. So very, very many, many different things. Uh, it, it's one of the most prominent uh, sequences of numbers in mathematics altogether and in combinatorics and real life, whatever. Um, we, we won't see real life today, but pr I'm pretty sure that Catalan numbers also count something in real life. Uh, they just count everything. Um, and the point will be is not that they are, well, this will be just, just some sequence of numbers, right? There are zillions of sequences of numbers. No, I say it again. The point will be that they count so many different, different things, which is a pretty, pretty impressive and really shocking in some sense. And while well, they were known for quite a while, I go back, back to many people, Euler, uh, Catalan, or Chinese mathematicians already knew them. Um, so link to everything is of course uh, down in the description as usual. And the point is they kind of opened the field of enumerative combinatorics. So in enumerative combinatorics, you would like to solve enumerative problems by writing down some kind of nice formulas, let's say generating functions, um, I would show you the generating function for the Catalan numbers. You can find it in the Wikipedia article. It's not in particularly nice and it's not in particularly bad. So it's kind of neither. Uh, so I, I, I don't want to show it today. That's basically it. Anyway, let's just jump right into it. And I have counting problems. I have many counting problems. And what is a counting problem? Well, this is a counting problem. So I start with a regular polygon, like the triangle, the square, or here I have a five gun and here I have a six gun. You know what a regular po polygon is. And I would like to know the ways of divide my regular polygons into triangles and would like to count this number. And I, I don't, so really my, my polygon is fixed. So those two are not the same, right? They are related by a kind of a, a rotation or reflection or whatever, but the, the polygon is fixed. So these are two different ways. So I count two here. Um, for starters, I should have started here. So how many ways are there to divide a triangle into triangles uh, by, by subdividing the edges like, like this, basically? So I, I, I really just would like to connect, uh, connect this edge to another edge. And no matter what I do, I can't do anything. But of course, I have the empty partition, which is just the picture itself. So I count one. So here I count two. I could divide like this, or I could divide uh, in, in the other direction, as you can see here. And for the, for the Pentagon, I would have those numbers and you can easily check by, um, by, by just basically going through it systematically that you get five. And it gets a bit demanding for the next one, you already get 14. And for the next one, I can cheat a little bit. You will, already, you will get 42 and so on. So those numbers grow very, very fast. Um, but it's a nice counting problem. I think it's an original counting problem. I'm not quite sure, but I think this was Euler's original question. As I said, there were also Chinese mathematicians who worked on this. I'm not quite sure what they were counting. Um, probably I should have just checked the Wikipedia article, which probably says it anyway. Point is, um, at, at this stage, there is actually no point. <laughs> That's the point. No, there's a very nice formula for it. It's not so hard. Um, it's not in particularly interesting. It involves a quantum, it, it involves a binomial and a one over n plus one. Okay, so that's the sequence of numbers. You can easily feed it into a machine. It will give you um, the sequence here, one, two, five, 14, 42, and it will grow exponentially because you have binomial sitting in there. Okay, just one counting problem out of many counting problems. So far, nothing has really happened. Counting problem out of many counting problems. Uh, Here's another counting problem out of many counting problems. I would like to count um, the number of symbols. I need n plus one symbols. So this is the first Catalan number, Catalan one. I want two symbols. 
this is Catalan two. I want three symbols. The symbols, the number of symbols is what you ever see, what you see at the top of those trees. This is Catalan three. I want four symbols and I call them A, B, C, D. And I'm wondering how many ways are there to bracket them. And with bracket, I really just mean this. Uh, strictly speaking, I would put an outside bracket as well, but I will ignore that outside bracket. And I also ignored it here on the slide. So there is no outside bracket. Well, there is strictly speaking an outside bracket, but as I said, I ignore it. Um, so how do those funny trees correspond to a bracketing? Well, I put my symbols at my leaves. My leaves are at the top, of course. And then I just look, okay, those two leaves meet here, so they get a bracket at the first stage. This one and the whole bracket meet, they meet here, so the whole expression would get the outside bracket, which I'm going to ignore. So this would be a bracketing of three symbols. Let me do another one here, A, B, C. So what do I do here? Well, for A, B, C, there should be one other bracketing because you all know the associativity law. So saying that two bracketings are the same, a, B, C. And yeah, you, they would meet here. So you would put a bracket here and then you would put the secret outside bracket for the, for the root. I don't want to put that. So in particular, there's just one way to bracket, well, two, well just to bracket A and B. Uh, here's another example. So A, B meets, I put a bracket. The bracket meets C, so I put a bracket. And the soul beast meets D, so I would put an outside bracket. Question is how many ways are there to count? Um, uh, how many ways are there to, to bracket those expressions? Turns out, spoiler, spoiler, it's again uh, the, the counted by the Catalan numbers, which to me looks very different from this counting problem, but apparently is counted by the same uh, symbol or by the same function, the Catalan numbers. Very surprising. Fun fact here, why I like this one the most. So, so among all the Catalan number count ridiculously many things. The link is in the description as uh, so Oasis lists zillions. We'll come back to that in a second. Anyway, so from the ones I know, this is my favorite one because it always reminds me that um, the usual associativity condition that you impose on whatever, in this case, a multiplication, for example, is a pretty, pretty amazing condition because it says that all bracketings are the same. So that should be the statement. So um, associativity should be all bracketings are the same, but it's only a condition on those Catalan numbers and never on the others. And as you see, well, these things grow pretty quickly. So uh, there is this secret proposition that you rarely see written out in, in a class on whatever algebra or whatever um, that Associativity with three symbols implies associativity with as many symbols as you want, which is, well, finitely many, of course, which is pretty good, uh, keeping in mind that the number of those bracketings grows pretty fast. In case you have seen this proof, well, um, you might recall that it was probably, well, it was probably proven by induction. And clearly there is something inductive in those two pictures. So let's have a look. So if I cut my tree here, I get a smaller tree and the smaller tree is covered by this. So whenever this part of the, uh, of the, of the tree is the same, and there are two pictures, I should get exactly this situation, right? So there should be a way to inductively prove it. And yes, of course, there is a way to inductively prove it. Let me also do it here. So I can, for example, fix, well, let's say this one, I can fix this triangle here of wherever it appears, it's here again. And whatever remains um, is then the same problem, but for the square. So you should see the two solutions for the square. And in, of course you do. So you, you, you would prove this using some kind of induction and maybe having induction in mind, you also see why those should be related. Anyway, here's another one. I leave this one mostly for homework, but basically what I want to do is uh, homework. Um, whatever homework means, is I want to write down an n by n grid. So here, this is C4, so I write down a four by four grid. And there's a diagonal in this grid, of course. And I would like to consider pass from A, this point down here, to B, this point up here, which um, go along this grid and not cross the diagonals. And I just want to count the same number. 
So um, here are some examples, not just some examples, here are all 14 examples, and it's 14 again. Or oh, surprise, yes, this is of course counted by the Catalan numbers. And that's again, then the, that, that's then the statement. So those Catalan numbers count a ridiculously big number of, of various things. So, um, the, so ACES is linked in the description. It's this entry. Well, the link is in the description. It's 108. But the quote from Oasis is, is priceless. I, I, I would sign this with blood immediately. So Oasis quotes in the comments to the um, Catalan numbers. So this meaning the Catalan, the Catalan sequence is probably, or the entry is probably the longest entry in the Oasis and rightly so. That should, um, some, that's a really nice summary of whatever I talked about so far and even further. So there are zillions of counting problems related to, um, to the Catalan numbers, which is very, very, very strange because I mean, this is a kind of strange sequence. One, uh, two, five, 14, the next one is 42, here's 42, 42, um, and so on. It's a little bit of a strange sequence. It counts so many things, it's, it's pretty impressive. Here are crossing less partitions of five, for example. So this is C5. So what are crossing less partitions? Well, you draw five points, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and you group them in little bubbles. So here's a bubble, here's a bubble, here's a bubble. So this is a crossing less partitions. And what you're not allowed to do uh, if you put them around the uh, pentagon, what you're not allowed to do is to put the bubbles like this. So this is a crossing partition. So that's what I don't want. I don't want those here. So I don't want those guys here. Okay. And you count those partitions, the number of crossing less partitions or non crossing partitions, whatever. And it's again given by the Catalan numbers. Catalan numbers everywhere. That's kind of the um, in praise of counting, right? That's kind of the slogan of this video. And of course, you can generalize Catalan numbers. And there have been many, many generalizations of Catalan numbers. Some are linked in the description like the super Catalan numbers, whatever that means. I mean, super Catalan, super must be good, right? So super Catalan numbers, whatever. They also have different names, maybe uh, some better names, whatever. Um, but for example, instead of coming back to my first slide, instead of counting triangle uh, decompositions of regular polygons, you could count um, all decompositions basically of regular polygons. You can count this one as well, where the bottom is certainly not a triangle. And whatever you get will be uh, given by those super Catalan numbers, the generalization of the Catalan numbers. And as you can see, they grow ridiculously fast. So uh, yeah, whatever the number is, it doesn't really matter. It's huge. Um, but I'm already starting waffling. So let me wrap up. So Catalan numbers, my favorite sequence of numbers. Why? Well, they look strange. So why should, why should I like the sequence of numbers? Okay, there's a 42, but otherwise, why, why should I like them, right? Um, and you really can't see it just by looking at the sequence. You see it by looking at what they actually count. And this ridiculously huge amount of different counting problems related to the Catalan numbers makes them the number one entry on my list of number sequences. Um, and not just, well, it's not the number one entry in the Oasis, that's, it's a 108th entry in the races, I think. Um, but they say it explicitly, it's rightly so, right? It's rightly so one of the longest uh, articles on the races. I totally sign that. Um, and the whole point of the Catalan numbers in the end is not just that you see different counting problems from really different parts of mathematics giving the same result, but also kind of, it of course opens a new field of mathematics or a new field of combinatorics, like enumerative combinatorics and a lot of problems are then in the end related to the Catalan numbers. And they are not so bad, right? They're easy to define, relatively easy to define. And well, maybe you, by now you also like one, two, five, 14, 42, and so on. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.